Hi everyone, I'm the Plant Propagator and welcome to my channel. If you're interested in seeing more of my videos, it would help me out if you could click on like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Today I am in the laboratory in Southwest Florida. I'm actually in the culture room. And what I want to talk with you about today is orchid seeds and seedlings and how those are treated uh, in order to really give you large numbers of plants. Um, and orchid seeds are they're a little different from, from other seeds, uh, as I think you know, in that they have to be planted in on, on media uh, in the laboratory. Most of the orchids that are, um, that are available were started like this. So they were started like this uh, in a laboratory from seeds or from, uh, from cuttings, from meristems. Uh, and those are the, uh, that was the initial starting material for really all of the orchids that are available uh, for, for purchase and, and showing. Um, so this is how this is how this is is done. And for in orchid seeds, I've been working with these for for a while. I I'm learning as I go. I'm figuring things out as I go. And and what I do is I plate these on the various media. I go to the literature and see what other people are doing. I talk to people. But I also evaluate um, I also evaluate various treatments very carefully. And, and what I want to do is today is tell you a little bit about orchid seeds, but also share you a story about how I evaluated some, um, some conditions for germination of seeds that really a lot of people use that may not be necessary. But first of all, let's talk about orchid seeds. So orchid seeds are small. They're dust-like. Uh, they're plated on these media. The black that's in the medium is from activated charcoal. It's one of the medium components uh, that are in there. There's also uh, there's low, uh, low levels of uh, minerals. There's vitamins. There's uh, sugar, sucrose in here. And there's a lot of stuff that they need for growth. Um, when you look at the seeds underneath the microscope, and what I'm going to do is show you a picture underneath a microscope uh, like this. This one isn't set up for image capture, but I do have another scope that is set up for image. So, so some things you can't see um, here, and you can't see with a naked eye very easily. So I'm going to do some image capture underneath another scope and insert them in the video as we move forward. Um, but what I want to do is, is uh, again, share with you uh, what the uh, embryos in these seeds look like and how they change over time and what I look for. So most cases when these seeds are plated, you can look at them underneath a microscope like this. These are two situations, two scenarios where I didn't see any embryos in there. But um, this has been 10 days and this has been longer than that. But uh, even after five days in this dish, I didn't see anything. But after 10 days, the embryos that were in the seed that I couldn't see previously, even underneath the microscope, I can now see it. It's not in, it's not in every seed, but it's in a lot of seeds. And this is, uh, this is Guarianthes skinneri. And it also is known as Cattleya skinneri. And this is a, uh, it's a really nice orchid. They get huge. They can produce a large number of seed capsules, a large number of seeds. And this is the plating of the seeds. And previously, I wasn't able to get anything. This time, uh, out of a few of these capsules, I was able to see some, I am able to see some developing embryos. But initially, I couldn't see anything. And if you take a look at this under the microscope, you can see the embryos. After 10 days, sometimes you can see this even right when you plate. After 10 days, the embryos are much easier to see. They're enlarged a little bit, and they're, they're cream colored to yellow to green uh, in coloration. So I'm going to get from, at least from this capsule, I'm going to get getting thousands of plants uh, from, this, uh, from this dish. And I actually saved the seeds, so I'll plant some more seed, even though I don't know if I need over a thousand plants of this. I, I, I got enough. All right. Anyway. Initially, I didn't see anything, but over time, if you look at this, you could see the embryos within the seed, even again underneath the microscope. Sometimes the embryos, like I said, you almost can see it with your, with your naked eye. Um, this is another uh, situation 
Uh, this is epi Epidendrum uh, Schomburgii, and I plated this seed. Uh, this is this is six weeks. Yeah, this is six weeks after plating, and initially I didn't see anything even in this dish. But after a week, it was clear. This was loaded, and this is a lawn of a really nice developed. Even after six weeks, what I'm going to have to do, and I'll show you this, the images of this that I collect underneath the microscope. But after six weeks, I'm going to have to plate some of plant some of these seedlings on a replant medium in order to get fresh growth. Um, but what happens over time when you have the embryos and the seeds that are this dense in the dishes, you can tell they're incredibly dense, um, it's best to transfer them uh, right at the time when they're ready, so right as you start to see some good growth. If you let these seeds and seedlings sit in this plate for an extended period of time, You'll have some decline in the health of these seedlings, but you can go back to these plates and pull out the seedlings that look good and plate them even after years. And let me show you, let me show you, I can show you some examples of this. So these are some plates that I have of, and this is, um, this is Dendrobium uh, mirbellianum. And these are some uh, plates that I, cultured, uh, actually it's a little while ago. So these I cultured about four months ago. But the bottom line is if you transfer these containers, if you give them more minerals and nutrients and sugar, you'll get growth. But the original plate that I have here, the, the seedlings still look good. And if I wanted to, I could go back and pick another thousand seedlings from this plate. I don't want to. Um, I don't really like this plant. I'm doing it for somebody else. But there, there's just, there's, and I've got many plates of this. So there's a lot going on here. But what happens is, again, on these dishes that are crowded, they slow down. There's competition. Um, there is. There's not many as many nutrients left, and they know that there's plants on top of each other, next to each other. So they slow down in growth. And if you transfer them to the new plates and to even larger containers, you'll get even more growth. So this is what happens. Uh, another situation like that that I can share with you is uh, in Cyclia tampensis, which I have a lot of experience with. This is, the, this is an old plate of uh, in Cyclia tampensis that was uh, where I plated these seedlings. I think it's, it's about eight months ago I plated these seedlings. And they're just really crowded. They're, they, they're, they're starting to decline a little bit, but you can let things sit in here for, for a year. But, but they're, they're OK. Um, these, the seedlings that were there, I planted them on another medium. It's the bottom of the dish there, and they grew really well. And then I even, uh, initially, I planted them in, there's another, another medium here in a, in a, in a tall, taller container. And I even have taller containers where these are hitting the top of these taller containers after, you know, it's been eight months since I planted uh, this seed. But they're, they grow well, but if they don't, if you don't transfer them, they pretty much stay in this state. And again, over the course of a few more months, they'll continue to climb a little bit. And pretty soon, you won't be able to get too much out of them. But you can still, you can, you can kind of keep these things and transfer them when you have the time. I like to push things through. I like to get things <laughs> mature and flowering quickly. But if you don't have the time, or if you just want to wait, um, you, can, you, can, you can store them in the state for a while. What I haven't tried is, and it should work, but, and I'll have to do an experiment, I, you can probably just put these in the refrigerator and store them for even longer uh, in case you just want to go back to this at another time and, um, you know, and pull out even more seedlings. So that's, that's a story there. Um, also, uh, what I have here is, is some, uh, some Certipodium punctanum that was plated um, not quite a year ago. But this plate still looks pretty good. It, they're dense. There's a lot of seedlings in there. But there are still, you know, they still look OK. And I could transfer, and I, I actually have transferred 
some seedlings from this plate to fresh medium just this past week. And I, I, I'm going to get some good growth out of that. Um, and so that's one other thing that you can do with it. The last thing that I want to share with you is an experiment that I set up on uh, seeds and germ seed germination of Certipodium punctatum, which is a, a Florida native. Um, there was a report in uh, the literature, it's actually out of the University of Florida, and I know the laboratory that published a report that said that these seeds benefit from a dark treatment. In other words, you put the seeds in petri dishes and put them in the dark. In the laboratory, what I do is I just put them in a box, a sealed box, and I put them right next to the ones that are receiving the light treatment. And what happens with seeds uh, in the dark is they, um, they get large, but they, 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 they're white. So you get um, these protocarms that form but they're white. They don't green up. If you use a, uh, a light treatment, what happens is the protocorms green up. All right? And I've germinated these in the past. And I looked at the literature on how to do this. And again, this lab says that they benefit from a dark treatment. Now, I've grown these in the past. I've always just germinated like I do with most of my orchid seeds. I've germinated them in the light, and they tend to do fine. Um, the old certipodium plate that I just that I showed you that was germinated. Those seeds were germinated in the uh, you know in the light, and I have plants that I've recovered, and they're doing just fine uh, that are already that are already growing outside. Um, but these are I, I wanted to do based on what was in the literature. I wanted to do an experiment. So this report out of the University of Florida says to start the seeds in the dark, and then after I think four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, whatever time, transfer those seedlings or the plates containing the seedlings to the light. So what I did is exactly that. So I have these that are in the dark that I started in the dark and then moved to the light and they greened up and they're fine. And then I have these that I just germinated uh, directly in the light, so no dark treatment. In looking at these, um, these these seedlings underneath the microscope, microscope like that, I don't see any difference. If I do see a difference, the stuff that was grown, that was light grown, is better than, more developmentally advanced than the stuff that is dark grown. So again, I have, I've got um, dark grown, I've got um, dark transferred to light after a few weeks, and then I've got light grown. And in my hands, <laughs> no difference. If any difference, the stuff in the light looks better. So this is something that you need to be aware of as you talk to your friends, as you go to meetings. If somebody tells you something, uh, sure, try it. But try the old way that you used to do it and try a new way that you just recently learned about. Um, I used to, it used to always upset me when I would go to the scientific meetings and I would bring people from my group to the meetings. They're so anxious to try something new and they don't compare it to the old treatments and that just used to drive me nuts to have that happen and to see that because in many cases it doesn't make a difference. You were doing it right at the beginning or the method that you used to use works better than the new method that somebody told you uh, to use. So it's fine to be a, your own scientist and, and evaluate these new methods and approaches or alternate things, uh, but compare it to your own, do a, do a proper experiment. Um, try their way, try your way, and maybe even something in between if you want. And, and hopefully you'll get it figured out. That's all there is to being a scientist. And if you do that, you're going to be successful with your plant growing, your orchid growing, and in, in all things. So let me step down off of my soapbox uh, and say thanks for watching uh, today. I wish you success in any future experiments that you do relating to uh, plant and orchid growth and habit propagating. <laughs>